this conference is about uh, uh, flexible electronics and also stretching to this case. But what happened when we apply this kind of device over the human body, uh, where the device will be uh, distorted by the, no the, by the motion of the skin? Uh, what happens to the communication when the frequency rises up to one gigahertz? Um, we, we should have to account for a trade-off probably between communication and uh, uh, mechanical uh, constraints. So I will try to answer uh, some of the, uh, this topic in this presentation. Uh, in my opinion, one of the most fascinating applications of uh, flexible electronics is the bi bio-integration with the skin. Uh, let's say you can uh, measure some uh, biophysical parameters by using a thin membranes or also uh, by painting uh, electronics of over the skin. Uh, but the critical issue is how can we collect information? Uh, we can use, for instance, the mobile phone, a uh, very low frequency, uh, by using NFC communication. In this case, the antenna is simply a coil. Uh, but you need to place the mobile phone very close to the device, so it's a couple of centimeter distance. And this is useful because uh, you can use a mass, mass distributed object, but you need the collaboration with the user. In other application, instead, uh, you would like to have an uh, automatic reading of biophysical parameters without placing anything close to the body. Uh, it's not a collaborative case, so you need a distance of about a couple of meters. In this case, you have to move to higher frequency, close to one gigahertz, and the antennas are completely different. Uh, here you can see some, some examples of my group. You could have uh, made by uh, copper, uh, copper uh, by thin wires, by inkjet printing, and so on. But in both the cases, we have uh, a same enemy. The enemy is the deformation of antennas when applied over, over the skin. Because the skin is a dynamical system, it's not, not fixed. Uh, we could have some very uh, critical side effect when we move to high frequency. In particular, consider this very soft antenna. This soft antenna that attached over, over the neck. And you can see here the deformation. We have to make some gesture. And deformation at the UHF frequency will produce a variation of gain, uh, which means a variation, a reduction of the resistance, and also a frequency shift. Uh, but moreover, you could have also the problem of the fatigue that will produce a damage, a breakage of the, of the antenna during continuous cycling uh, of a human gesture. So how can we solve this problem? Uh, at low frequency, researchers since 10, probably 5, 10 years, have introduced serpentines, uh, meandering, so that you can reabsorb uh, the deformation. That works very well, and the antenna is really stretchable. But we cannot apply this when we move to UHF. Why? Because the uh, behavior of the skin is different. The human body is very lossy when we move to increase the frequency. So that if we have, if we move from a, a linear antenna like this to a mandoline antenna, uh, we have a, a new effect. In fact, apart uh, beside the uh, current which are in phase, so contribute to the uh, constructive interference, we have the blue current, which are in phase of position. So uh, they will distract one to another. So they do not contribute to radiation. But nevertheless, they will inject power inside the body. So they do not radiate. They produce power dissipation. In other words, we are reducing the efficiency of the antenna. So we are worse and worse the communication performance. So before defeating the enemy, we have to know the enemy. Need to map the deformation of the human body. Uh, then we, we need to analyze the true deformation of uh, typical antennas under this constraint, uh, analyze the degradation of the electromagnetic performance, and then combine mechanical and communication uh, behavior in a unique representation. The, the overall goal is to un understand the most critical body districts, the most convenient shape of antenna, and the most convenient neutral orientation. Okay, let's start. First of all, digitalization of skin stretching. Uh, we can use uh, some reference point over the skin, a big one to analyze the, the 
detect the orientation, and then a 3D optical scanner system to collect the geometry, uh, the complex geometry of the skin. Then, uh, starting from this image, we need the surface parametrization with nerves to a mathematical function so that we can relate uh, this uh, segment to the distorted segment and we can evalu evaluate the strain. It is the local uh, deformation of each segment. But then we can put together, uh, we, we can introduce a meta representation, a stretching map, when the, uh, the color is related, related to the uh, deformation, the blue for compression and the red for elongation. So it's a static, uh, it's a fixed geometry, so we can compare a uh, different kind of situation. Then we have, uh, for instance, several. Uh, gesture of the same district, also like the neck, and uh, so we have different maps of the formation. Okay? So you can see just by high that uh, this gesture is mostly blue, let's say compression. This other gesture instead is mostly red, said elongation. We can compact even more uh, in this other representation, uh, all black, total black, where now the information is in the thickness of the slide. Uh, the, the thicker, the most deforming, we are the absolute value of the, uh, of the strain. So, we can repeat uh, this procedure to several districts uh, over the thorax, over the deltoid, uh, over the forearm. It is typical region where you can attach sensor to get uh, human information. And we have 22 configurations, so a lot of uh, measurements. But at the, at the end, we have a clear picture of what happens over our skin. Uh, so we have different maps. The next you see is the uh, mostly uh, the forming, so the most stressful region. The thorax is the less stressful region. But we also have additional information. For instance, give a look to these uh, arrows. This arrow indicates the direction uh, where the uh, stress is less effective. Okay, where the, thick, the thickness is uh, smaller. So if you apply an antenna parallel to this direction, to this direction, to the other direction, it will be stressed less. Uh, finally, we see that the maximum stress is 30%, not so, so, so small, 30% in the case of the neck. Um, and so we can apply now this stress to analyze typical antennas. So uh, we have a ring, a split ring that we have already considered in our uh, experiments, and also a Mendel dipole uh, as, as a reference. First of all, mechanical model with the final element, uh, with the force applied here, then a different angle with the maximum strain. And this is an example, example of uh, stressed configuration. The light one is the rest, and this is the stressed one. And the color here indicates the most critical region. And the, the matrix is the stiffness, let's say the ratio between the, the applied strength and the relative deformation. The higher, the more stressed configuration. Uh, over the stressed antenna, the formed antenna, we can apply now an electromagnetic analysis with find a difference time domain with the layered configuration, speed fed muscle, and the performance parameter is now the realized gain. Say the gain of the antenna uh, multiplied by the power transfer coefficient which is related to the impedance matching between the antenna and the chip. The best is uh, obviously equal to one. Now we can put all together, and we have a clear picture of mechanical and electromagnetic response. First of all, I'll give a look to the, to the shape. The shape are the deformed antenna when the force is applied like the arms. And over the antenna, we have the superposition of the electric current at uh, close to 100 kilohertz. Then we have a polar plot. For a plot for the, the blue is the variation of the gain uh, with respect to the un undistorted uh, rest configuration uh, for each application over the force. So uh, you uh, is in the B, so you will like to have zero everywhere. There's no deformation. So uh, here is more or less undeformed. It's nearly, nearly constant. But instead, the red one is the mechanical stiffness normalized by the normal maximum value. So uh, you have the maximum stiffness, rigidity of the structure at this point, this 
point, 180, and, and so on. Then the open loop, the split tree, completely different behavior. Uh, you can see in comparison here, completely different. Uh, now, the, uh, the highest variation of the gain occurs one, at 120, uh, while instead the stiffness is maximum uh, as a zero, 180. And finally, the, uh, uh, the Mendel dipole, in the, in the case of the Mendel dipole, we have a lower variation of the, uh, of the stiffness, and the, the stiffness is also high in, uh, for a direction of the force, which is normal to the Mendeling, because there you, you are not able to, to absorb. Uh, to sum up, uh, we can put together, and we see that the Mendel dipole has the lowest performance in terms of the gain because of the uh, opposite current that produces loss in some form. But produce the, the, uh, the smallest stiffness, because, you know, uh, we, we, it's a kind of uh, uh, a serpentine. Instead, the ring will produce the, 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 the lowest variation of the gain, but the highest uh, stiffness, 0 0.2 newton per meter meter, and the split ring is more or less in the middle. It's also interesting to note is that the worst angle for gain and worst angle for stiffness are different. So there is no, uh, none of this configuration which is optimal for both robustness with respect to deformation and electrical effects. Uh, just a corroboration with measurements, uh, two orientation of the antenna uh, of the open ring in this way and this other way, so that, uh, okay, the, the black and the gray is the rest condition, this is the variation, while the red one corresponds to that position for which the numerical simulation predicted the smallest variation of the gain, as in the part you can see, variation is small. The blue one, so this one, uh, corresponds to that configuration that numerical analysis predicted to as the highest variation of the gain. So, it's a clear corroboration. Well, by this map, you can also understand which it would be the uh, more uh, convenient orientation between the antenna and the grid. Uh, in conclusion, the uh, behavior of the antenna over the grid, over the, over the, uh, the body could be, uh, is dependent on the position. Uh, this is the reduction of the grid distance that would be up to the 30, 30 percent. Uh, the thorax is the best configuration for the fly antenna, if you need some information here. Um, the, the antenna deformation is, as, is, is anisotropic, and uh, also the variation of gain is anisotropic. Uh, the neck is the most stressful uh, position. Uh, we could have a variation up to the 3 dB, the gain, and uh, stress insensitive geometry are not electronic insensitive, and vice versa. So we need probably to redesign the epidermal antenna so that they could be compatible with the stress field of the specific. Thank you for your attention.